Welcome back, everybody, to week four of the Hearthstone Legendary Series, brought to you by ESL. Uh, our next match, I believe, will be going further into the bracket to see who's going to be able to uh, get a top two spot immediately uh, between Waifu as well as Goon Wave. Now, this one's going to yep. be cool because uh, these guys are already the winners. Uh, we're going to see what's going to be going on. Uh, if not, if they're not prepared, we'll also be just go straight into the loser's match as well. We have Frozen, who lost his first match. And, uh, you know, even though Frozen lost his first match against Goon Wave, I still felt like he played well. He just got a, f a couple of unlucky rolls, especially if you want to finish that Druid game yeah. to close out the series. And yeah. then uh, I guess we're going to be going into the loser's match uh, okay. to start things off. Yeah, this match should be interesting. Shoop still has a lot to prove. He got... Uh, 3 0 in a very quick best of five series by Waifu. And uh, it seemed like he just never really got going with any of his decks. Yeah. Uh, the pal Well, I, you can make an argument that maybe his approach to every series uh, may have also been fundamentally yeah. flawed based on how he wanted to play the matchup. It felt yeah. like a lot of times he was playing for value. The Priest versus Hunter game, though, I feel like there's nothing you can really blame him. Priest had oh, no. every single good card. And then uh, wrapping up the series, Handlock. Was just sitting duck, just taking a lot of damage, <laughs> just couldn't stop. So yeah. it felt like the series was determined a lot by the draws and not a lot about the uh, the possibility of playing around certain things. Yeah, and that's just what happens with the nature of some of these aggressive decks. Uh, yeah, and that's the risk you take. Yep, which is why I per I personally wouldn't even bring Hunter into the series. Yeah, it's it used to be that Hunter could just completely blow out a game against anybody, but now a lot of classes have more tools. Yep. And uh, they have more ways to be able to deal with Hunter, Antique Heal Bot, and, and just uh, some stuff that makes it tougher for Hunters to be able to just get going. And sure, sure. Hunters really didn't get any more tools to be able to start finishing out games a little oh, bit more, more they, consistently. They got Glaive Zooka. Glaive Zooka. That, that one's a really good weapon. In fact, Clock people don't no. realize that that's actually one of the strongest cards Hunter yeah. has gotten uh, because it gives them an ability to use weapons very liberally. Without having to save the charge. Because yeah. a lot of times you're stuck at a 3 1 Hunter's Eagle Horn Bow, and you want to try to attack something, but you also have a trap. Yeah. Uh, the Glaive Zooka so fits that medium where, like, you're killing off a lot of low health creatures to start off, your opponent's Mad Scientist, uh, the Undertaker on turn one, and then you have an opportunity to keep up building up that momentum. So I actually think Glaive Zooka is a great tool. We'll see if that comes into play in game number one as we do have Druid versus Hunter, followed by Paladin versus sh uh, the Warrior. And then we have a uh, handlock mirror, I believe. Right? Yeah, I believe. Oh no, Frozen's Frozen is playing the zoo. Frozen's playing. Oh the yeah, zoo. that so was the first matchup of the we day. We have yeah. zoo versus handlock to wrap things up. Okay. So based off of matchup advantage, I'm giving it to Shoop. I think all three games he has a pretty strong way to, to close it out. Yeah. I'm giving him the edge in each matchup. Paladin versus Warrior is very hard to win from the Warrior side. Yes. I I'm gonna give Shoop like a 60 plus percent to, to win the series. Yeah, I think that Frozen's really gonna have to come out of the gate strong and take a victory off of Shoop with this this first match with the Druid versus Hunter, but it really is going to be hard. That second matchup is going to be the one to watch. It's going to be a little bit longer, but Paladin is sort of the quintessential control class. They just have, more, usually can pack in more big threats, and when it comes down to like an arms race later in the game, Paladin is usually the one that comes out on top. But yeah, first definitely. match, of course, is going to be that Druid versus Hunter, and sometimes the Druid can just get blown out. That's one of those matches that can be a little tough if the Druid doesn't get some good draws early on. All right, well, game number one between uh, these two guys are about to start, Druid versus Hunter. It depends a lot on how the Druid can start, and I like two of those cards already, Innervate and Keeper of the Grove. Yes, indeed. Paramount is shutting down the early game aggression, but it's not just about the early aggression. It's all about the mid game. <laughs> there used to be a time where you would say, against Druid, you keep high main. I don't think now is the time anymore because... The, hunt, the start from Hunter is so great. Yeah. But high means are also a way for Hunter to climb back in, assuming this start will get shut down, which yeah. most likely will. You see it. You see the Undertaker. You coin Innervate Keeper of the Grove. Yeah. This is... Oof. Oh, and he's two Innervates, two Keeper of the Groves. A lot of the time in the, in the Hunter matchup as a Druid, Keeper of the Grove will trade like three for one, sometimes even like four for one, which is absurd considering... Uh, I mean, wow. usually it just trades like two for one or something like that. But there's the Fellweaver again, making an appearance early in the hand. Okay, and uh, if Frozen doesn't have a way to deal with it, it's devastating to say the least. Yeah. Uh, I guess the Freezing Trap really does make up for the Innervate, because now that Keeper of the Grove costs six more, or six mana rather. Yeah. And uh, he is, he's in no rush. I mean, as long as the longer this game goes, the Druid has an opportunity to fight back as well. Yeah. 
Well, it gets his second Undertaker. So having both Undertakers really early on is good because that can be a dead draw later on. I really like yeah. Clockwork Gnome. That's another card that Hunter's got as sort of a tool. Having another one mana uh, death, rattle. death Rattle is pretty crucial because it uh, can allow for just even stronger openings. It's also the spare part, too. You know, oh, the spare yeah. part comes in really clutch. You don't really expect maybe the plus one attack or health to make a difference, but a lot of times it does. Or even like freeze. The freeze is huge. Yeah. The stealth sometimes is massive. A uh, stealth Savannah High main. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that it's one's already deadly. cool. Like, my favorite combination that I found so far is uh, a lot of times Mechanical Yeti is a very popular card. And what that is, it's, it's a Yeti stats 4 for 4, 5, yeah. but it gives both players a, a spare part. Yeah. I've gotten that with my Freeze Mage, and I stealth my Doomsayer. <laughs> Boom. How, you can't do anything. How do you deal with that? You don't. You need Deadly Shot or, like, Bouncing Blade. Oh, Bouncing Blade. Yep. It's another great card. So, uh, Frozen doesn't have Swipe, but he still has an opportunity to uh, do a lot of impact on this board here. Yeah. Innervate out, second Keeper. The nice thing is he still has one more Silence for a high main yep. if it comes out. And in a way, you know, Freezing Trap... Onto the keep of the grove is not always the most effective thing either. No. It, it's it, it feels good, especially when it's innervated out, because using a freezing trap on something that's innervated feels like really great value that you're getting out of that card. Yeah. But still, I mean, you, you have to keep into account in the back of your head that all that silence is still there. It's the battle cry effect. Yeah. Or in this case, the choose. Spare part coming to hand is the rusty horn. This one gives a minion a taunt. Whether you want to do it offensively or defensively, say you play Fell Reaver and you taunt the Lothep. Yeah. It also That's... makes a very interesting sound. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Is that what he's thinking about? As much as you want to play Mad Scientist, just because you want to get out the trap earlier, because you yeah. don't want to be drawing traps from this point on. Nope. Fell Reaver is <laughs> such a strong play. In Rusty Horn, the... No. Wait. No, he didn't use it. Uh, there is a way to deal with this Fell Reaver. Does he choose to ignore it, though? I think he might. Yeah, he's uh, targeting the Lothab, implying he wants to trade with it. Gonna try to burn some cards here, but... Alright, Glaive Zuka, Hunter's Mark, and Not Web Spinner. Not that useful. Oh, well, this... <laughs> Spellweaver is going to do some damage. That is a really big draw. A really cheap minion to play uh, that can also enable, like, kill command <laughs> and stuff in the future. I mean, this is Wait. really powerful at the moment. <laughs> Just attack the face. It's so amusing to me, Frodan. Oh, the, the, the spare horn. Part. The horn. <laughs> yeah. I can't even focus on anything else when that thing comes out. What happened right now? Uh, it's always the rusty horn. Well, he's in trouble. Uh, he can play the Savage Roar and finally kill off. Yeah. But he's at nine health after this turn's over. Yeah, and he'll have to. He'll have to. Yeah. Well, yeah, nine health from that. That's just really tough. And I guess he's gonna burn more cards. That's not what's important though. The damage has oh, been done. Yikes. He's getting some valuable information though. Two mana flare is being played in the deck. Yeah. Oh, he forgot about the trap. Oh. <gasps> Oh He's dead. no, that's huge! Oh, that's he was really banking on wow. that. Wow. Okay. That was a quick game. Fell Reaver just won in the game. Yeah. Wow. Fell Reaver giveth and Fell Reaver taketh away. That's essentially what this card does in every single game of Hearthstone. It lands. Yeah. That's. Um, just just look at how single-handedly you can just overpower opponents, especially with hunters where they're able to set clocks. Yeah. The reality of the situation is even if he killed that Fell Reaver. He had kill command in hand. Yep. Uh, the beast was still alive. If he drew any point of damage, would have actually ended the game right there. So, as much as we like to look at, oh yeah, you know, freezing trap. Oh my gosh, he got he rolled correctly. It's yeah. actually the case where uh, Hunter most likely would have won. Yeah, and even if it just gets like one shot to the face before it gets taken out, that's still almost an entire turn that your opponent has to use to clear off the fell reaver, mm -hmm. and you're okay with losing three or six cards to do eight damage to the face. And well, yeah, the concept is it doesn't matter until you actually fatigue out. Yeah. You, you draw your entire deck. Yep. Because imagine if Fel Reaver said, instead of discarding three cards, put three cards at the bottom of your deck, it still would have been the same thing. Yeah. yeah you yeah. wouldn't have seen those cards. So it's, it's, much, it's very tempting to like look at the cards being discarded and be like, well, Fel Reaver sucks. I can't believe I lost <laughs> half my deck for it. But well, in 100. reality, it's such a strong tempo play that 
it can completely destroy your opponents really easily. Yeah, Hunter is not not usually a deck that makes it to the the end of their deck. They, it doesn't usually go to fatigue. Even that last game where Fell River discarded That's like right. 18 cards, he still lost before he went to fatigue. So. All right. Well, uh, here we go. This one might go to fatigue. It's that kind of uh, matchup, especially one with a lot of heals and armor ups. All As right. we do have the Fire War Axe coming out here to answer the zombie shout. You know, I, I'm a little bit interested on why he used the coin. Because he really hates zombie chows. Well, that could be a very logical and rational reason, which I wouldn't argue with. Um, the second is, I wonder if he interpreted it as being a more aggressive deck, since his opponent did play Hunter to start things off. True. But at the same time... Why do you need a rush to kill a zombie chow? If it does two or four <laughs> damage, it's the same. You just, you just gave up the coin, which is your primary way of yeah. being able to take an advantage in a control mirror. Yeah. Because if you want to hit your power turn a little bit earlier, now you can. Yeah. You just gave up the coin. Yep. I think Frozen is a little bit on tilt. Maybe, because that like, last game was really rough. He didn't have a, a way to answer. He, he, he felt like he probably had a really good start, actually, but then yep. ended up just falling anyway, which can really be demoralizing. He would have taken one more damage, he still would have had the coin. That's essentially what he traded for. A coin was a plus one health. Yeah. Well, yeah, that zombie chow wasn't going anywhere. What is he going to do? Is he going to buff the zombie chow? Can't really do that. Ooh, must mm. for battle. Yeah, I mean, if you if you know it's an aggressive deck, they're not playing zombie chows anymore. They're playing clockwork, clockwork gnomes, gnomes, leopard gnomes, etc. You don't it's, really have any room for more one-drops right. now. Zombie chow is the way to answer the one-drop, so... Well, uh, here we go with turn number th four here for the Paladin. Took me a while to summon the right number from my brain. Uh, <laughs> Muster for Battle six. is so good. Yeah. I, really I like actually it. completely underestimated this card. It doesn't look very impressive when you read the text. Oh, no. But when you see it in action, you're like, wow. This card is actually really good. Well, against Warrior, it's so hard for Warriors to deal with a bunch of 1-1s. One -one and then oh, yes. on the chance that you have... The quartermaster, right? It just makes it that much more valuable. Yeah, imagine if uh, all of these. Well, first of all, the, one of the weapon charges has been exhausted, yeah. so then he can't kill off easy things like the exorcist or the the elder peacekeeper. He already lost one of those charges. Yep. The second thing is, like you said, the buffs. Yeah. So. Well, in this situation, it's not as good because death bite is is pretty tough to be able to deal with. You got to have that that. Quartermaster timing right now to be able to deal with that pretty well. Yeah, but I think you still with Harrison Jones this. It's it's still really powerful. Yeah. Yep. It's attack. Oh. Yeah. Because. Uh, okay. Well, I he don't. He actually missed uh, two damage by doing this. All right, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The whirlwind effect, like it's just it's just. A, it doesn't matter. This game's gonna go bit, to like thirty cards anyway. It's a little bit anyway. sloppy, yeah. like just the reality of the situation is, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Because more likely than not, Alex Straza will determine the outcome of like health. And yeah. Uh, it's not that Paladin will burst you; it's that Paladin will eventually wear you down to the point where a few points of life really do matter. Yep. So it's okay to. to do these mistakes as long as you're making sure that the grand scheme you think you're playing the right cards. Like as long as you played Harrison Jones that turn, it was fine. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on Gore Howl in in Warrior decks right now? Do you think uh, it has a place, or do you think oh, there's yeah. just too much? Gore Howl certainly has a place. A lot of high high level control Warrior players they are taking Gore Howl, Gore Howl out. Right. Uh, but what I like about Gore Howl, I keep it in. I keep Gore Howl every single time. Uh, I like Gore Howl because. It's such a good card advantage card. You just yeah. use one weapon to slay like 15 minions. Yeah. And it's not, well, it's ridiculous. It's somewhat of a liability against Harrison Jones, but at the same time, not that much. Because it's not as much as like Doomhammer will, where they could potentially get too, so many cards. But Well, I mean, Gore Howl against Paladin actually has seven cards worth, or seven attacks that are legitimate. Yeah, You're yeah. always going to have a target with the, yep. with the one attack Levaney, so. You are correct. I'm actually a big fan of Goral. Hmm. Well, yeah, I'm actually going to start a fan club on the, <laughs> the subreddit. Just said. Good luck. I will join it. And who knows? Maybe Post it'll here just. If you're a fan of Goral, maybe that threat is already made. Well, huh? all right. Medium response here. Uh, the Sylvanas taking the shield bot. Pretty annoying though. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is just really, this is, uh, Shieldbot is, is one of those cards that's just really tough to deal with. It is, um, but at the same time, it's one of those cards where it works a lot better in Paladin than a lot of other classes. Yeah. Because Paladin needs to stabilize on turn two. Yeah. Way more than other classes need it. Yeah. Just like at Warrior. Warrior has Fiery War Axe. They already have plenty of help there. But Paladin on turn two, other than playing their normal Pyromancers, like what do they usually do on turn two? They hero power. Hero power. That's Shield it. Shield Bot is like three hero powers in one. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe even more. Whoa. Deep. No, but yeah, I like it's and it, it's also uh, it a lot of times it baits out quite a bit of removal from your opponent as well. I don't know, it just at least a couple times that I've played it, it just seems like they go all out to try and kill it because how long until we see uh, Blood Knights be rotated? I think that's actually going to be pretty good. You think um, so? <laughs> I've seen a lot of zoos, high level zoos, run uh, the what is it, the Hanso Hanso mechanic? Yeah, yeah, the Hanso Mechano. Yeah, the Hanso four Mechano. mana three two. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think there's a lot more Divine Shields in the game, especially since Paladin's coming back. Mm. I think it'll be pretty good. I, I'm liking Little Exorcist here. Little Exorcist. Uh, be a three, plus a consecration, four, I guess. Yeah, it'd be a four five plus yeah. a consecration, uh, and then you can use. Hopefully, your bane survives. Like you want to spread out the damage so that it hits your face and it hits like yeah. your your bane, and then bane goes into Doctor Doom and you trade into it. Yeah, that would be the ideal scenario. In fact, if you feel like spreading it out more, you can hero power so that there's a higher chance that the boom bots are going to hit the token for that's, like four damage. That's very true. Very true. This is the play that. I personally like. Of course, uh, Shoop is also the Paladin player. He's probably put way more time to this class than I have, because Paladin's one of my least played classes, for sure. Well, it's... It it's uh, also, it doesn't seem like there's too many other plays in this situation. This is a little more... I don't know, I don't even know if this is more consistent of a play, because these Doombots could end up being a little bit of a liability against your board. It all depends on where they go, though. Yeah, it gives your opponent an ability to respond as well. Yeah. So, it's it's definitely the less sexy play, but it's much it's much safer. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes safer works. Yeah, I That's definitely. That's what my mom told me. <laughs> she said, she, she sat you down, she said, Frodan, don't be sexy, she be safe. Some, she said sometimes safe works. <laughs> oh, man. Well, a little exorcist is going to get silenced here. Yeah, it feels like uh, a pretty powerful silence target. You do want to keep it for Tyrion. Your magic shall not I feel like you could get away with not playing silence, though. Whoa! Okay, so he's going for the aggressive route. Okay, well, he has Gromash in hand, so he wants to be super Gromash aggressive. Gromash and Cruel Taskmaster as well, so. But I mean, this is like, like this is where it's like, ah, well, you know, I just clear the board, Consecration. Well, if those Doombots go face. What if they both go face? Well, then you're saying TQ a lot. Like, it's actually not that big of a deal. Okay, yeah. He, he also has Lay. Well, yeah. And then next turn, he'll have Lay on hands. He's got a lot of ways to keep himself in. Frozen, I think, made this play. Ooh. That's okay. nice. That was really nice. I think Frozen made this play under the interpretation. It's very likely my opponent doesn't have Consecration because he sh could have used it last turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Shoot was going for a higher value. Yeah. But uh, in this case, it didn't necessarily pay off that well. Yeah. Because Frozen still can uh, race ahead. And what usually becomes the case is that Paladin outcards Warrior late game. Yeah. Because uh, the hero power just goes unmatched. You have to use cards against things that don't cost cards. Yeah. Like weapons against tokens. Mm -hmm. Which makes it tough to, to keep up late in the game. But this is sort of Shoop's playstyle. He plays very conservatively, tries to get the highest value out of his cards. And we saw that sort of come into play earlier on when he played maybe a little bit too conservative in a situation where he couldn't really afford to. This right. game, it's a little bit easier for him to do that because he's playing against a warrior, it's a slower deck. So holding on, like, things like holding on to that Consecrate for an extra turn yep. to try and get more value out of it make more sense in this game than it did in, in the one he played earlier on. Why do you think uh, Shoop also opted to save on the lay on hands? Even though it's like a pretty weak board, he chose to play True Silver. I'm not sure. Um, maybe what? just a lot of times you see Paladins wait till the very last, last possible moment to use lay on hands. 
The only thing that I can think about is how Alex Straza is in the back of his mind. And if he heals up to 30 and then Alex Straza is back out at 15, yeah. he actually is in danger of dying to a combo of Gromosh. So, like, saving Lay on Hands for Pose Alex Straza, in my opinion, is actually pretty strong. Yeah, definitely. And especially if he runs the second Antique Heal Bot as well. Then he could just, Whoa. after Alex Straza, two Th turns later, go and go up to full health. This is really interesting to me, too. He's not killing off the Shield Maiden, he's leaving it up. That, that's really interesting to me, because I feel like Chu Silver can get so much value off with Divine Shield. You leave up the 2-2. Like, wh which would you rather have? Like, uh, a safer board here, or not? Oh, wow. He's he's getting into the danger zone, though. Still does have that lay on hands, though. It's, it's, you don't have to lay on hands until you do. <laughs> that's like... Yeah, yeah. The, ooh. Oh, my God. He's playing Tink Master over Spark. What the? I like this. Okay, well that card's not really gonna do much. <laughs> you you kill off this three three. You attack the silver hand recruit and you yolo swag this Tink Master down for the three sixty no scope. I like it. You don't want <laughs> you don't want to save the Tink Master for like the, nope. the 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 pseudo removal. Oh, you're right. I guess you could you could do it on uh, Ragnaros. Yeah. Or Alex Straza. What would you rather have a Rag or a five? -five? <sighs> but it's so good. It's so good. Like, what if you, you just out, turn your 1-1 one, one into a 1-1? One, one? Then nothothing happens. It's like you play a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, like mind control deck. Hmm. That's Aww. true. We, All right. Well, I wanted, I wanted some really cool plays. We Tink, Tink Master is like a good tech to remove like one like a one big threat, like a uh, Ragnaros or something. Yeah. I played around with Tink Master in control decks for a long time post-nerf. And uh, I don't know. It just okay. felt too... I like mind control tech better in, in a lot of situations. Maybe now... I don't know, I guess things have slowed down a little bit, but I'm not sure. Uh, not really, yeah, it's, things definitely aren't uh, as fast-paced as they used to be, in, like, yeah. maybe a month ago. You don't see as crazy of boards as yeah. quickly anymore. Yeah, you gotta kill off this uh, shield maiden, play a zombie chow, just absorb the hit. Yeah. <laughs> and you still have some really good defensive maneuvers. Sneeds Old Shredder might be a big game-changing play. I'm really excited for that Sneeds Old Shredder. I was excited for it last game, but it's going to be great. Oh, I'm not going to make any promises, but I'll, I know it's going to be great. I don't know. <laughs> I've seen some pretty underwhelming Sneeds Shredders, though. What's the worst you've seen? I don't know. Lower Walker Cho? Nah, I think Lower Walker Cho is not the worst. What would be the worst? Nat Pagel? thinking it over right I'm now. I'm really thinking it over. It's very introspective. Uh, you know what? I'm going to get back to you on that one. Oh, well, we might get, we might be seeing it here shortly. That was an error. Why is he saying that was an error? Because he could have executed. Oh, okay. Uh, he's rushing his plays. Like, he, he could have executed the 5-7 to protect it better. You ne It's like we said, you never know what kind of, uh, Cause now he gives the opponent the ability to respond. Like, say, he doesn't have to kill off his needs. He can, yeah. like, have Alder Peacekeeper. He can do all kinds of other stuff. He's got Boulevard, by the way. Just want to throw it out there. Not that great right now. Uh, it's a decent body for Taunt. Like, if you... I, I would probably kill off the Armorsmith first and then uh, play Boulevard. Yeah. So that he weighs a 2-7 and, yeah. and then you taunt him up with Defender of Argus. Yeah. That's a possibility. Uh, you don't want to start. You don't want to throw down Tyrion. You know that the silence is out of the deck. You don't know if he's playing too, though. That's and true. Because he, he's shown Spellbreaker. Yeah, he still could be playing like an owl. Exactly. Which is was a, has been a staple for so long. Uh, this is also okay too. I like this. If you want to play a Sludge Belcher instead of Boulevard. Yeah. I mean, there's no need to rush. You just need to place a taunt so that you don't die. But you don't think he would have used the second the silence on? Yeah, you always save the silence for Tyrion. Right. Sneeds can. Well, this is interesting. You can. Oh, roll. here we go. I don't know if that legendary will matter. Ooh. It doesn't matter if it matters, Frodan. What if it's Kelpazod? Wow. Wow. I don't make know. Your, if make your predictions. Oh, jeez. On um, what this is? Oh, he's gonna wait. He has so much health before he's gonna go for a brawl. He wants more brawl value. Yeah. Because w what is cool taskmastering that Sneed's going to do? Like you're potentially turning a 5-1 into something a lot more threatening. 
Right, but you mean you want to you want to get the brawl because you can brawl afterwards. Yeah, it's that's just about true. the brawl. You want to you want to load up more chances for it to die. So you want him to hero power. You want him to master. You want him to do a lot of other stuff. So that way you're getting cards back. Because again, warrior gets out carded in the late stages of the game. But here's the thing. I don't think Shoop has to do anything. I think he can just no. attack this and just pass. Yeah, he's he's still got plenty of room in his hand for more cards. He still has a lot of big threats. He's not in any danger of, of getting right. closer to being in lethal range. So, And he's got a lot of well, hard hitters still in his hand, even once the Sneeds and the Legendary following get removed. Now that Frozen's drawn the Sludge Belcher, though, I think he can do the same thing. Just play that, armor up, and pass back. He doesn't actually have to rush. He's still in a pretty good spot health-wise. And he still has Brawl, ultimately. How many cards do these guys have left in their deck? Are we are we able to? Are, are you on a point of view that's able to check? Yes. There oh. are six and five cards remaining. Okay. All right. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. If this lives. If the Ysera lives, that's it. Oh. oh. Dangerous. Wow. That was a dangerous wow. moment. Frozen's wow. stressed, man. He's playing with his hair. Yeah. He's like about to yank it out. Be careful, man. Yeah. You're going to want that later on in life. No, he's taming it. <laughs> I got yeah. this uh, tip from a hairdresser one time. Sometimes you just got to keep taming your hair over and over again if you want the, the okay. do that you need. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, well, uh, I think this is a appropriate, pretty appropriate time for Bolvar. Five minutes, six, seven. I'll take it. I mean, again, Bolvar's not that bad in this scenario. Nope. He's just when when he's he, he if he's top decked in like a game where it's like deciding. Ba oh my God! Five. <laughs> <laughs> Frozen doesn't know how to respond. He's like, what is this game? Uh, what geez. kind of life does my opponent live? Wow, the value out of that slime. Yeah. Oh man, Tickmaster Overspark, new meta. And now he doesn't have Brawl, what's he going to do? He has to execute. This is rough. This is really, really rough. And Shoop hasn't even been through. He's got a little bit of a smirk on his face, right, I he think. Has, he has Tyrion and Bolvar. Tyrion, Bolvar. Um, Quartermaster still has quite a bit of value late game. Yeah, also, I mean, Bolvar is going to actually... Well, Quartermaster has value now. Yeah, well, if he manages to remove everything, it's like... Yeah, well, you. I think you hear a power Quartermaster. Yep. There's still no reason whatsoever. Or do you, can you fit another? Yeah, you can definitely hero power yep. in Quartermaster. I mean, it could be... No. Because if your opponent doesn't remove anything, he's going to die in a couple turns anyway. Yeah. It doesn't leave any more room on the board, but... That's fine. No, you, you have so much power on the board, it doesn't really yeah. matter. He still has a quality Consecrate left in his hand as well. I don't know how Frozen's going to be able to, to pull his way back into this one. He's got to find some way to find an opening following a way to be able to clear that Sludge Belcher. But then Tyrion's there as well, so. Aww. Why, why do you need a Boulevard? It's Quartermaster. <laughs> Call the men to arms. <laughs> Which one of these huge cards do yes. I play right now? Ha <laughs> ha, here we go. Watch and listen. That's cool animation. All right, well. Rosa needs Brawl number two. Eh, I don't think he needs oh. it. That's usually a great card against Paladin. But not right now. You know what? Not Whirlwinding last turn has completely backlash. Frozen, I think, has uh, is dead. <laughs> yeah. How you, you have to execute to stop damage, but you're using spot removal when you need AoE. Like, this is a time where you're like crossing your fingers in Arena. Like, please no yeah. Flame Strike Arena. <laughs> he always has the Flame Strike. I feel like people, when they're playing against me, keep flame checking their opening hand. Always I, I always get that feeling too, but a lot of times I'm the one holding the flame strike too, so it's like, ah, well. Dirty, dirty, bro, man. All right. Yeah, 22 damage on the board there, so what did you take away? Five? Okay, now it's like, well, I think I can throw out one of my legendaries here. I wouldn't be mad at, like, Tyrion or Bolvar. Nope. I, I think Bolvar to like. I'd play Bolvar first. I think Bolvar just to like said like I won and I have Bolvar in my <laughs> and Tink Master in my deck, but yeah. also realistically, if this Paladin comes out late in the series, he needs to conceal it. Yeah. Oh, here we go! <laughs> wow. 
Whoa, that roar. I mean, throws <laughs> up six stick and sees. He's like, I got nothing, dude. I mean, he has a BGH for a Boulevard. But, but he's, uh, he's like, you know what? I'm just, I'm not clearly going to win this game. I'm not even going to give you any more information. Like, if I'm playing BGH, yeah, I'm done. Let's go to game three. Yeah, wow. So, Shoops Paladin finally taking a victory here. And uh, a pretty decisive one. It seemed like from the get-go, you had a, a pretty good control over that matchup. And, yeah. I mean, you said it. It's just so hard for a warrior to do much because a Paladin's just going to outgun them the longer the game goes on. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's going to bring us to our final game, which is a Warlock versus Warlock. Uh, this one is going to be, again, pretty hard for Frozen. I really like how Handlock's able to fight off against early aggression now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I especially like it if they're replacing their Farseers with Exorcists. I've experimented with this, Yeah. and I love it. It's really nice. Um, sure, you don't have the flexibility of healing your own minions or face like Farseer, yeah. but having an extra taunt sometimes is just as good. And if you're putting in the antique heal bots anyway, you're still going to have that heal. Exactly. And of course, even Recombobulator can be a good way to heal up your giant. So there's a lot of crazy tools that you can use as a handlock now to be able to deal with the aggression. I think and he is playing the Farseer, though. I think we saw one at least. It's still good. It's still a very good yeah. card. Frozen is going to need some help. Even after he wins the series, he most likely will have to resort to Zoo. He's going to need a 3 with Zoo here. Like, I'm looking at the rest of his lineup. Druid's not going to do it because he knows his opponent has Handlock. Yeah. And based off that knowledge, Shoop should play Handlock every single time. Every single time. time. Every single time. It's got pretty good... Hey, look at all his... His Paladin deck, well, has a pretty good matchup against Warrior, but his Warlock deck has good matchups against Zulok, Warrior... Or Zulok, Druid, and a decent matchup against Warrior. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, let's go into game number three and see if Shoop can close it out with a sweep, busting out the brooms. All right, uh, this is a pretty good start. He's got uh, Leper Gnome, or sorry, not Leper Gnome, uh, Undertaker, but no Leper Gnome. Uh, instead, he's just got the uh, Haunted Creeper to follow it up. I there's, like that response to Coin Owl. Yeah, there's a Dark Bomb in Shoop's hand as well, so it's actually the first time today we've seen that card. So good. So, so good. It's like a soul fire, but better. Uh, well, right now. Right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Prior to soul fire nerf, I would say that soul fire was yeah. almost strictly better. Yeah. One mana more, one damage less, but without the drawback, which can be a pretty big deal because a lot of the times you value a lot of your cards in Halo. You do. You have some pretty good cards, although uh, none of them more important right now than having some AOE. Like, oh, having the yes. Hellfire is so great. I uh, would not be surprised to see the Owl come out here. Now, the thing is, if the Owl comes out and his opponent plays the Ruby Neg, pretty sad. So actually, the right play would be to Dark Bomb something and pass. Yeah. Um, but do you Dark Bomb the Knife Juggler? Or do you Dark Bomb the Haunted Creeper? You have Molten Giant in hand. And you have... Sludge Belcher. So next turn you Hellfire, the next turn you uh, you Molten Giant plus it, Sludge Belcher or even Heal. His hand is pretty good. Uh, I'll give you that. He, I think you can get away with silencing this and then um, or even Dark Bombing the the Spiders. The reason why you don't want to Dark, bo dark Bomb the Spiders though is because you do two damage to yourself. But this is where it's like I use both Owls. Uh, he plays the Egg. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good shot, too. He doesn't have to give up his spider. Shoop isn't even phased right now. He's just saying, you know what? I expected that to happen. Um, All calculated. Still, though, this is the... Well, if he expected that to play. happen, should have dark bombed the 1-2 spiders. <laughs> but, I mean, no one's gonna <laughs> no one's gonna rationally make that conclusion. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well... I'm gonna play around this specific card. The only person that can do that and win because he did that is Kalento. Yep. Seems to make calculations and risks that pay off more time than not. So, we're going to be playing Lothab, right? From Frozen's perspective? Yeah. Is there any, is there really any justification of playing Power Overwhelming with everything else here? Mm, no. I mean, he can tap here because he's his hand... Well, I guess Power Overwhelming is pretty strong for what he's going to be able to do. He's going to put his... Well, I mean... So, if you attack... Are you afraid of Molten Giants at all? Because you have a Power Overwhelming to push through. 
I, you're always afraid of Molten Giants because usually a handlock will mulligan for Molten Giants in the zoo matchup. But he can't, um, he doesn't, first of all, he's not sure because that was the first time they played each other. Okay. But the second thing is, if you attack and he has two health left, he can't Molten Giant and Shadow Flame because he has, um, he's got Lotheb out. Yeah. So I think it's okay actually to go from here. Okay. If he picks up Owl, he's actually dead. Wow, Kay. that's really close. Uh, well, actually, not as close as you think it is because the Sludge Belcher takes two well, hits. Well, really close um, by meaning uh, if he he had two cards to draw into an Ivy Gal. Right. right. Um, but he didn't. So, still, he's in an okay spot, but the Molten Giant Antique Healbot turn is actually pretty strong. He still can't do it, though. He's at two health. He's at one uh -oh. more than he needs to be. That's like the perfect the perfect amount of health for, for Frozen to keep him at. Yeah. Um, at, at least for this turn. I mean, it's not going to be as good. In Ooh, Mountain Giant, not card. what he wanted to draw. Not what he wanted to see in that situation. Does he have a way to get out of this situation? Molten Giant, Dark Bomb, the low with them. There'd be 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I suppose you do that and you Ancient Watcher. The alternative is to Siphon Soul. Yeah. So but it's either it's either Siphon Soul or Lothab or Dark Bomb it. Siphon Soul would be a little bit of a safer play. It's more of like a, I don't have the time to cast this later on, so I'm going to yeah. do it while I can without giving it away. The problem yeah. is if... Uh, <sighs> oh, Whoa, that is ballsy. Hello, and Ancient uh, Watcher is probably one of the worst cards I mean, he could have drawn. He's, no matter how he fits, wow. he's dead. He needed that to be a taunt giver. Like yeah. He was hoping that would be Sun Fury Protector. Yeah. So that's going to do it for game number three, and Frozen's finally on the board with Zoo. And looking at how the matchups pan out for games number four and five, I'm feeling like we're going to have Warlock Mirrors again because... Yeah. I look at the field of uh, of classes, and I feel like the best strong class that they could each choose here is Warlock. Yeah, and I said it earlier, a lot of these guys choose that third deck as their sort of ace deck. They choose that as their deck they're most comfortable with, the one that they can take victories off the most, because a lot of times it does come down to that third match. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the times we see a mirror match of that third match, and if we go to a fifth one of that blind pick stage, sure. sometimes we ended up seeing it again. So three times in a row. Maybe the charm. Here. I don't mind. It's, as long as it's not priest versus priest. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's not priest. Handlock versus Zulock is actually, it's usually pretty fast paced when both guys are doing damage to themselves and each other on each turn. Right. Usually it's goes pretty, pretty quickly. chaotic. Yeah. For sure. Well, uh, I guess we're about to find out what these guys have chosen for game number four. Uh, I also would be okay with Druid, but just hmm. okay. Like, I wouldn't be, like, ecstatic about it. If uh, Frozen chose to go with Druid, It'd be a decent choice. Yeah. But for uh, Shoop, I think we're going Handlock every single time. We know Frozen uh, does run double combo, mm -hmm. so that shores up his matchup a little bit against Handlock. Oh, he chooses to go with Paladin. <laughs> That's man mode. Whoa. Okay. Well, who has the advantage here? The I think the Paladin. Paladin, yeah. The Paladin has a lot of ways to stall, and uh, the, the only thing is the Druid still... It's like the same way as Druid versus... Um, Shaman, where Druid has a lot of hard times keeping up uh, with like the board presence of Paladin as the game goes on. Yeah, and uh, it's also like Priest too, because Paladin has so many heals to put himself out of range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of range of the combo. Get out of that threat range. And yeah. um, if you can clear a Druid's board and and really just get rid of a lot of their momentum, right. sometimes it can be hard for them to call the way back. You only have two swipes. That's Only like the, that's the big that's the big shame of it. Like you, yeah. you can't clear everything, um, and there's lots of ways to harass, especially with some of those like cards that you you try doing damage with, and it just gets neutered. Yeah. So Paladin versus uh, the Druid, I like a lot of what I see from this Paladin deck. Hopefully, I can see some more. I want to see some Tink Master action again. Yeah, this is a really exciting deck to watch, just because there's a lot of interesting interactions that can happen with the Sneeds and. And uh, I think he was running the pilot at Sky Golem as well, so it's always cool to see what comes out of those. Oh boy. Well, we have double Zombie Chow start for Shoop, and that's, that's pretty nasty. As uh, Frozen, we'll have to try to answer this immediately. Does he have the Innervates? Does he have 
the fast start, or is he just going to let the board control go to the Paladin? How does Druid deal with this? Do they have the Wrath? A one, <laughs> a, a one mana creature. That is, that is like the worst thing ever to deal with. And even the the shielded mini bot here what is really annoying to deal with for for Druids. Maybe Druids will start running blood, the Blood Knight. Hmm. Maybe. Okay, well, Frozen, uh, he he coined Wild Growth because he realizes, well, next turn he wants the Wrath. Yeah. So, not much point in, like, saving onto the Wild Growth. Innervate? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Harrison Jones is a really good card to have early on against Paladin because it can stop a lot of their, not momentum, but a lot of their ways oh, yeah. to deal with the, your board early on. It's like such a good tempo and card advantage card. Yeah. It's like when it works. Because you have you gain the tempo from destroying their weapon and gaining a lot of mana that way, and of course you gain card advantage too, so it's just, you know, Harrison's just Yeah. Just ridiculous. And as we all know, Paladins always have true silver champion on on turn four, so good card to keep. Good card uh, to keep. Are you positive? Not this time. Unless you are specifically looking for it. When you don't want the true silver champion can't cop out like that, man. You have to go hard. <laughs> oh, man. You let me down there, Shoop. Well, you just right. a Consecrate. You either have True Silver or Consecrate. I'm amending my statement. Oh, look, uh, a Consecrate. Right. Wow, I'm right. Well done, man. Well done. You're on top of it. Well, uh, Frozen is in a very awkward spot. Look at this. Power of the Wild. He Handful summons that spells. as a Panthers of 3-2. How much do you think he wishes is Harrison Jones? Was it true of the thing? Probably a lot. Well, I don't know how much it would... The Panther's just going to die. I guess he could innervate out the Druid of the Fang. Yeah, exactly. I don't so. like Druid of the Fang. What? I think it's a terrible it's card. It's so good in Arena, dude. Well, if you can Druid get Druid of the beasts, Fang is nuts. If you can get it... Okay, so I drew the Druid of the Fang on my second... Like, the second round of cards in Arena. And then I got one beast. Well, that's your fault. Because you didn't synergize with it. Well, like, why not. would you pick it if it... Druid of the Fang is the coolest card ever! No. Never picking that card again. Drew the Claw is awesome. You're a hater. Harrison Jones also is great, too. In this <laughs> he choose Drew Silver Champion on turn five. <laughs> yeah. But you oh, say man. they always have it on turn four, so your statement still stands incorrect. Ah, oh, man. I let you down. <laughs> Right. Still there though. Still gets the value out of the Harrison. Yeah, that's great. So that's what uh, he needs. He doesn't want to give it up. He doesn't want to give up Harrison easily to just a couple of small minions. So he has a wrath. But that also takes an innervate. Yeah. So I mean, innervate. Druid's fighting for tempo and board presence, but I mean, you have I to have know. tempo there because you're you're not going to rely on whittling him down and then bursting him with a Force Nature Savage or a combo because Good you draw. know that he has it's lay on hands, anti heal bots. That's a really good draw. Fits curved perfectly, too. That's a great draw. <laughs> really? I think Dr. Boom does effectively the same thing as Swipe. Oh, well, let's see what he gets. <laughs> Light spawn. Okay. Okay. That is hilarious. He has wow. to kill this off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? I find it funny that the, the mob comes down in a parachute. So it's basically implying that the mob that gets spawned right. was what was driving the piloted Sky Golem. Oh, man. Is it Tink Master time? I think so. This time for sure. <laughs> What's he going to get? Devil Sword Bust. Oh! <laughs> Frozen. He's like, what Oh, the so wrecked. Oh man! This is why it's like another thing where I was like, wow. I feel like Doctor Boom is really good because you're giving your opponent initiative uh, on the board. That's great. That is great. Okay. Well, thankfully there's uh, a way for him to stay. Like Doctor Boom is actually a really big deal right yeah. now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But still, that that play had a lot of swag behind it. Yes, it did. I think Damn. every time you play Tink Master over Spark, it's just even if you get the the squirrel. Uh -huh. You're like, well, I still play Tink Master over Spark. Come at me. <laughs> How about this? Uh, do you play Tyrion and then um, just, just kill off Doctor Boom? Like, or I, I mean, that feels terrible, Frodan. You think so? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's one of the best plays here, just because those. I don't know. I. I don't know. I think you throw the 
the Devil Sword in, throw your Tink Master Overspark into his face, and then Consecrate. But then, then if you Consecrate, how do you follow up with your Board Presence? You like, do you, do you want a Board Presence? Are you really... <laughs> Are you really that? Yeah, I guess so. Are you really that adamant about having board presence as a talent? He's he's playing I, his I odds right so. here. I think so. Oh! Wow. <laughs> well, that's worst case scenario. I mean, the worst case scenario if you drop the Tyrion is that uh, he silences it and still a six six body to absorb some damage. Like that's true. not having minions to fight on the board is always scary against Drew because they can combo you. Yeah, but he's got an anti heal bot. I guess I, I get what you're saying because yeah. if he plays an, a creature, then you he, have to not he, only catch it for that creature, right. but have enough to heal up to avoid the combo. But I guess we're just sort of back to square one. Wow. Okay, so gets the keeper here. Yep, and all he's do is just push for damage. All right, and double savage roar. The threat is looming. Double savage roar swipe even. Yeah, but he's got uh, the, the the taunt and the heal here. Yeah. So Tyrion still gets some pretty good value. Yep. He absorbed the battle cry. He's going to kill off a minion, maybe even two. Even got the little exorcist for a little bit more a little bit more protection for the, the later stages here. Yeah, unfortunately, Druid is actually one of the classes that doesn't run death rattles like at all. Yeah. The only exception might be Cairn if they have it. Very true. Or Sylvanas, maybe? No. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything else. Exactly. So Lil's <laughs> actually isn't that. Force useful. of nature trees. <laughs> Soul of the forest. <laughs> Soul of the forest. Wow, that would actually be really good. If you like Soul of the forest, a lot of creatures, and then you just play Lil' Exorcist, well, Exorcist into is... it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It only works on the enemy opponent. Well, yeah, I know that, but like, if that's what I'm saying. If you if your opponent's Soul of Forest, right, right. like a board full of six creatures. Right. Okay, uh, Savage Roy here can help clear out everything pretty much. And he can be a little bit more liberal with these because he has a second one, so. Yeah, and the, the tokens are what really matters, really. Yep. The fact that he can get a second Savage Roar off. He's only used one Consecrate. That was the one that was in his opening hand, so. Um, the likelihood that. It, it's still relatively early in this game. I think we just hit turn 10. So he's been through, what, like 15 cards in his deck, maybe? Uh, no, not even, because he doesn't have any card draw. Oh, he, he had... No, he didn't use an Harrison. Um, well, this is a weird spot. It is, but it's still nothing to free here. Just play Sylvanas with the extra assist. Yep. And just go for your best to clear the board. He already used one Savage Roar, so you know that he's starting to run lower on the resources. At least he can't double combo you. Was that lethal? Whoa, actually, hold on. He needs to sacrifice one of these tokens so that way he gets all of his uh, tree ants. This is very good. As much as you're, like, freaking out. No, oh, I think that is. Yep. Wow. Uh, okay. That's 6 plus 6. That's 12 plus 14. That's 26 damage. That's enough. All right. Actually, I think that's exact lethal. Is it? I, I counted. I think I counted 24 on my first time around. Yeah, this is... That's exact kill. That's pretty... That's what? pretty devastating. <laughs> so Frozen gets his revenge for all the devil sores that he's had to face today. Yeah, all right. Now the series is tied. Wow, going to that second blind pick match. I'm just, I'm just surprised he chose to pick Paladin here. I think he was really confident in it. And uh, if Druid wasn't able to end it that turn, uh, I think Paladin would have had a pretty good case of like running away with the game. Oh yeah, as soon as he can. Well, until Druid picks up Ancient of Lore. Not even stabilize, because I don't like that word when you're when you're talking about a Paladin. You stabilize as like a warrior or a handlock, but as Paladin, you're just like. It seems like you're always stable until you lose. Oh, I, 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 I can't really agree with that a lot of times because I feel like uh, as a Paladin player, you're often scrambling. Especially well, in, against... in control matchups, I'm saying. Okay, sure. In control matchups, it makes Because how does a Paladin lose a control matchup? It, it, its health drops to zero or below. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, my mind is blown right now. <laughs> well, uh, it, in control matches it's against usually Warrior, a combo. it usually gets bursted down. Yeah. So you, you feel like you're always in or control. Or fatigued out. You feel like you're always in control until you lose, is what I'm saying, as a paladin. Okay, that's that's interesting. Um, I, I Either way, though, he, his opponent doesn't have control decks. His opponent has aggressive decks. He's got Zoo. He's a warrior. Well, I mean, you know you're not going to pick warrior because you have paladin. Yeah, that's true. Like that's true. Just, 
Yeah, I agree. Maybe just Paladin's his favorite deck. Yeah. Maybe he feels the most comfortable on Paladin, doesn't feel quite as comfortable on Handlock. You also have Handlock, so it's it's, it's a deck that uh, I'm not sure if you'll be really comfortable playing. Like, I don't, I don't think I'd go with Warrior. If I'm uh, Frozen, like I said, I'd go Druid. Druid again. Uh, or Zoo, depends on how you're feeling. But yeah. I think Druid's more vanilla against everything else. And based off the knowledge, I think you do go for the Handlock. I, yeah. I still think you do. Yeah. Well, you, you, you look at that game, and you feel like you're in a pretty good spot as a Paladin, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, I mean, he lost. So uh, I think you switch it up in that situation, unless you're really confident in that Paladin, but there's that off chance that he just gets... He also got good rolls, too. Like, he got yeah. the, the, he got the, the Devil, Devil Sword. Sword. Yeah. Um, he had good response to everything. Yeah. He's going to try to queue up again. Wow, mirror match. And this is... I think every time we've been to the fifth match, it's always been the same mirror match as the fourth match. In this series, yeah, most of the time, mean, at least mirroring the game before, mirroring the mirroring the game before, yeah. Uh, just because, I mean, what it comes down to is what deck are you most comfortable with? What deck do you think gives you the best chance of winning? And I guess these like guys, paladin. he feels like it's paladin. You know what? <laughs> more more paladin games. I'm not complaining. Nope, I. It's definitely it's just exciting surprising, to watch, to say the least. Oh, that, especially uh, the, so much confidence in the paladin deck, especially with Swagmaster Overspark. Swagmaster over spark. Well, uh, here we go once more, one more time. Druid versus Paladin. Now, this starting hand looks a little better. Um, I don't mind even just turn two hero power, turn three Tink Master if your opponent gives you the chance. I want you to look at that, Frodan. There's a Consecrate and a True Silver Champion in. That's good. His opening hand. You need to have that. True Silver is so fundamentally important to how Paladin controls the mid game. Yeah. So is Tinkmaster Overspark, apparently. Oh my god, do you go for it? Or do you coin consecrate? <laughs> do you coin consecrate or do you go for it? Here we go! Oh no! A play to win oh, the game! Geez. Oh jeez! <laughs> oh! Frozen. This time he's, he's smiling Rex. a little bit. Well, it's okay, because he has that true sword champion. Tyrannosaur is wrecked. Devil Sword is wrecked. Oh, man. This is a little uncomfortable. But he's got yeah. true server. He's got two. Okay, so two true two servers make this completely fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he leaves the Violet Teacher, which huh. I'm always wary of, because it's like, well... He also didn't sack in his... Silver yeah. hand recruit, which could just get hero powered down. Well, and, I mean, and then he loses the opportunity to kill. If you uh, if you don't kill, if you like, you wouldn't. I guess you wouldn't do that, but because of this very reason. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I'm just surprised that he didn't take out the violet teacher because now he's gonna have to consecrate to clear this. I don't think you're you're that upset about that though, because you're basically you're effectively still getting better value to your cards because you use power of the wild also to be able to clear that. I don't know. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. You think so? I think I, it feels good. I feel like you're you're feeling a little hesitant because you could have still used this two silver, two silver to kill off the Vi teacher and the Devil Sword. And sure, you invested it because it was damage that you want to take off the board. Hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, imagine if oh yeah yeah imagine if he only had he would have played Spectral Knight yeah he played Spectral Knight. You, ha you challenge with the Sludge Belcher. Special Knight can't actually push through. Oh, he has Black Knight. Yeah. So he Black Knights, and then you Sylvanas. Yeah, you still would have been a pretty decent spot. Yeah, I I agree. And you've got to keep in the back of your mind that he gave him that Devil Sword. Not only did he give him the Devil Sword, but he also Ooh, he gave, him gave, up right. <laughs> gave up his Tink Master. Gave up the Tink Master over Spark. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yep. Okay. He brought that upon himself. <laughs> okay. Well, back to back to square one then, I guess. Uh, God, you have to consecrate this board. I think so. See, I think I would have used consecrate the last turn. Oh, it's fine now. It's like now because the problem with consecrate is off the curve. Now you at least you can squeeze into hero power, and your hope with this hero power is that it gets two mana from your opponent. Like you're not yeah. actually hoping that it does anything. Yeah, and he's got Muster for Battle, plus Bolvar. Right. The ultimate combo. You just do not want to see Ancient of Lore here, if you're the Paladin, because you're like, ah, I'm so far behind if he does yeah. that. So seeing this, uh, this such, um, 
this ain't this a special knight. I can't say the card name. Seeing the special knight is like, eh. All right. Well, worse things have happened. Yeah. And the Paladin is one of the best classes equipped at taking out Spectral Knight because they have these battle cry effects. Yep. They don't usually have to target things with spells. Mm, I think he's worried about Harrison Jones in the back of his mind. And if you Harrison Jones, I guess he draws three cards and you're really sad. Yeah. I like but Mustard for battle here. It, you it, do? Well, because if he does Harrison Jones, then it opens up opportunity. Even though he's drawing three cards, it opens up opportunities later for you to be able to yeah. push for more damage and, and protect your true server better or protect your your Lightbringer better if it comes to that. I don't know. Protect your Lightbringer. Oh, well, actually, it makes sense because he has Bolvar in hand. Yeah. So if you have Bolvar and you're able to stack it up, it's a 6-7 right now. He might not even thought, have thought about Harrison Jones. You're right. His monster for battle was a precursor to a strong boulevard. Yeah. He might just Are you dead though next turn? Hmm. Well, you have to think that you would be. Hmm. So I think you, you have you to play have Sludge to play Belcher. Sludge here. Belcher because you're afraid of dying. Yeah. I mean, death is one of the most scariest things in life. <laughs> it is. <laughs> In life and in Hearthstone. <laughs> I mean, behind public speaking and spiders. Uh, well, I would say death is pretty close to those. Yeah, I mean, some people are more afraid of that than actually dying. Uh, Scenarius here is so stinking powerful. Wow. Yeah, he's setting himself up in a pretty good position just tearing through these. And uh, Cause he's got Black Knight for Tyrion or another Taunter. Yeah, and he's used one of his Consecrates already. Um... Don't think, yeah, he's, he's still got one on his deck. He's got the equality, the first part of that combo, but the bigger this board gets, the scariest one going to be. And I think this turn, you kind of have to play Sludge Belcher again. But even then, I think you're still dead. If he has combo, of course. Which he doesn't, but. I think you can get, also get away with playing a quality. Quality with. And then a taunt. Can okay. you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you quality and then you play Sludge Belcher. You hero power. Yep. So the same the same difference. Um, and then you also can heal up over the course of two turns. Yep. Not to mention that Bolvar is actually getting out of control here. <laughs> what is it ten is it a ten seven right now, I think? Something along those lines. Uh, combo here is Pretty powerful. I don't know if it kills him though. I think he's gonna. Oh, no, he it does. kills him! Whoa! He, does. he has the exact <laughs> damage. I forgot about the hero power. Once again, exact damage on the lethal. Wow. And that's. Oh no, but shoot. He misses the rocket launch. <laughs> that's a big deal. Well played. Well played. Yeah, that's yeah. two games in a row that Frozen draws into exact lethal when it seems like Shoop is about to stabilize. So, uh, that's. Wow, he stays alive, and uh, what a story that would be if Frozen's down 0-2, and then on the brink of elimination in the very first round, uh, ends up going all the way and plays yeah. the top two. I mean, he's one step away from it. Yeah, and if, unfortunately, Shoop, that means he is yeah. out of the tournament. Uh, he did not make top two, but he will. Have, he mm -hmm. does have more chances. He can play in the Open Cups and uh, place high, just like he did this week, and, and try and make it back in a in a future week. Yeah, Paladin, unfortunately, falling short here and not being able to, to go all the way. Uh, a little bit sad about that, but you know what? Shoop got here and he played Paladin, so props to him. Yeah, it was a really fun deck to watch, and I, I always love seeing players that bring in things that may not be considered uh, favored, but we were talking about a little bit earlier. Paladin, I think, is in a lot better spot than it was uh, before GVG sure. came out. They got a lot of crazy cards that they could use. Muster for Battle, Bolvar, Quartermaster. Things that sort of shore up, and the, the mini bot as well, things that sort of shore up their weaknesses and um, make a lot of matchups a little bit better. And it's always fun to watch. All right. Well, uh, that series was brought to you guys by uh, Crucial and Western Digital. Make sure to check out all of their storage memory units at Newegg.com. Uh, we also took a look at the bracket to show you guys the progress of how today we're about uh, a little bit over halfway through at the moment because yep. we do have the winner's match coming up soon. Uh, for you guys, and then we also have one more second place match. Remember, these guys are playing for a spot for tomorrow uh, for the main event. The main event will be starting around 1 p.m. Pacific. We're going to try to see if we can time it around the King Gwyn event, too, because we realize the Chariot Tournament has been going on 
Waifu versus Green Wave will be coming up on stream, guys, in just a few minutes. So hang tight, grab a cup of coffee, maybe even boot up a game of Hearthstone when we come back. More action here at the ESL Legendary Series. <laughs> 